So the second half, I try to complete the development of this whole method. Yeah, it's pretty compli complicated, yeah, but we have to complete it. Yeah. Then, uh, to today, definitely we cannot finish part C. Yeah, we just left a uh, small portion of it. Yeah. All right. So now, yeah, so let's bring this back. We want to take analogy, yeah, try to match the form, you know, term by term, yeah, term by term here, okay? Yeah. The first term of the left-hand side should match the first term of the right-hand side, and so on, second, okay? Yeah, yeah, in that way. So there, here, we need to determine if there exists such u function. Given m function, m function, most of the time, we may not get a u function. Only when we are lucky, we can find u function. Okay? Only when we are very lucky, we can find such u function. Now, in general, we are not that lucky, okay? Yeah. So first, we need to determine if there exists such u function such that partial u over partial x equals m function, and partial u over partial y equals the m function. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. We want to see if such a function exists. Fortunately, there is another nice property in multivariate calculus. Multi, yeah, so what, what, what do you call, call that? High dimension calculus, right? Yeah, here. Critical property. We need to use another critical property here. Yeah. So here, I just remind you of the formula. Look at this formula. Second partial derivative. Second partial derivative. Yeah. You take a partial derivative the first time with respect to x, but the second time with respect to y. You can take, you know, do twi twice. So partial two, twice. Okay? Yeah. This notation. But following the order, partial x partial y, following this order, okay? Partial u, partial x first, then partial y for the previous result, okay? All right. But the second one, you change the order, the same function u, you take partial y first. After that, you take partial u. So here you can see this property tell us if you take partial u, partial, partial x, partial y in two different orders, the result is the same under certain condition. Yeah. There is some condition. If the condition is not satisfied, then it's, it's not true. Okay. Yeah. So here, here, I, I will give you the, that condition later, okay? Yeah, simple condition, under certain condition. All right, so with this property, now if we take partial m function over partial y, we get this expression, second partial derivative expression. Similarly, if we take partial n over partial x, we get this second partial derivative. The partial order is different. But we know, based on this property, we know they should be the same under certain property. I will write that property later. Okay? Yeah. There is a special property. All right. So now the criteria to determine if such u exists based on if these two 
partial derivatives are the same or not. So the criterion is you check this equality, true or false. If it's true, then U function exists. If it's false, U function does not exist. How about that? So the method is there. And this criterion, not hard, right? So you know how to take top partial derivative. Yeah. So then you just compare. Yeah. Yeah. I will show you a few examples. Ah, oh, no question, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Criterion for the equal, equality. Yeah, you, you need to have some condition. <laughs> yeah. So not for arbitrary u. Okay. The condition actually here we take a simple condition. The second partial derivatives are continuous. If the second partial derivative continues, then we have this identity. Okay. So it is a little stronger than what we need, but because this condition version is very simple, we just take the simple, simple version. Okay, yeah. So we d we don't want to, you know, squeeze some flexibility out. You know, yeah. So we just take the simple condition. Enough, enough for us. Okay, yeah. All right, so now halfway, yeah. So our method, so we, we're here, the halfway on you know, our method. The remaining half, n next question. How to find u function? Assume the criteria satisfied, okay? Yeah. How to find that u function? Yeah. So next, find u function. Take integral. This time we also take into account. Assume we have this identity okay, for the equation or equ equality. Let's say equality. Okay, yeah, better than identity. Yeah, so equality, more precisely. Yeah, for the given equation in this differential form. This is differential form. Okay? Yeah. All right. Because this method, we have to use the differential form. All right. Solution. Here I describe the idea of the solution. Yeah. All right. Properties for the hidden u u function. The property. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me just put under the exactness assumption. We have the following equalities. Yeah. yeah. We assume there is such u because this criterion is satisfied. So the u exists, okay? When u exists, so we call this original equation exact. You know, yeah. So exactness property. It ha has, yeah. All right. So we should have that u. Although we use u exists, but we do not know what is that u, but we know the u should satisfy these two equalities. These two equations. Let's say equations. Yeah. Okay? Because u are unknown. These two equations are unknown. Okay? We need to solve the equation for u. Then we complete. Okay? We com complete the whole method. Yeah. All right, so let's solve it. For the first form, we take inter integral. Integral with, with respect to x variable. Yeah, x variable. So you treat y as constant. When you take integral with respect to x variable, you treat y as constant. OK, y is constant. Then, the indefinite integral, you should add a constant, but the constant, you need to expect y terms 
involved in that, because that constant is the so-called constant with respect to x variable, right? With respect to x variable is a constant. It's not a real constant. Because we treat y as constant. So when you take integral with respect to x, we fix y. Okay? Y is fixed. Y does not change. If y is fixed with respect to x, we treat it as a constant, right? Yeah? All right? Yeah. So this general constant should be represented by certain function of y. Because all y terms are fixed. If all y terms fixed, can we treat it as a constant with respect to x? Yes. Because when we take a partial derivative, partial x, let's think about this. When we take partial x, this term is gone, right? Because that one only has y terms, but you take a partial x. So all the y terms are gone. Is it correct? Partial derivatives? Let's recall partial derivatives. How to take partial derivatives? When we take partial derivatives, yeah, yeah, I do not see, yeah, I see, you know, puzzling, yeah. Let me use this simple example. x squared plus y squared equals 1. All right, so the left hand function. Now we want to take partial x. You tell me what do we get? Partial derivative, partial x derivative. 2x. We want to take partial on left hand side. Okay? So x term, yeah. 2x. How about y term? 0. Yeah. So for when you take a partial derivative for x variable, all y terms you treat as constant. So it's 0. All right. Yeah. Here, the same logic. When you take partial x on the, this function, this is a two variable function x, y. This part definitely non zero, but this part zero. Okay, all y terms all gone. Okay? Yeah. So that's the way here. Regarding partial derivatives, how do we interpret the constant part? Okay? The constant part. Only the constant with respect to one variable. Okay? In that sense, constant. But not an absolute constant, okay? Yeah, because there is y involved. So it's not an absolute constant. There is y involved. All right. The first one. Second. We have second. Second form of u, this time, because it comes from integral with respect to y variable. This time, the constant part, we should use a function of x. So we call it L of x. L of x. Because when we treat y as a variable, x, all the x terms become constant. So we treat as a constant term, general constant term. OK? Yeah. So after you can understand these two ways, these two forms should be the same, right? Yeah. U function, U function, they are both U function, just the expressions different. But must be the same. So we can equalize those two different expressions. Our goal, we want to determine K of Y, L of X. That's our goal. The question, how to determine? those two unknown functions. Yeah. We need to find some special equations for L function and a K function. Yeah. How to determine partial derivative, 
but this time we take partial derivatives on one, one, and two as follows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For one equation, this time we take partial y. Okay, we don't take partial x because if you take partial x, you go back to this one. Nothing new. You cannot get new information, right? So if you take partial x, you get our old equation. Then you, you get nothing. Only when you take partial y on y, you get some new information. Okay? Similarly, for the second, second equation, you take partial u over partial x on the second one, you can get some new information. Not on y. If on y you go back to old equation, nothing new. Okay? Yeah. So these two partial derivatives, we can get some new information. And with the new information, we can solve for k function and l function. Yeah. 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 All right. Now, let's do it. Yeah. Take partial y on the Equation one, yeah. all right, yeah, because partial u over partial y, that's n function. We already know it, okay? Partial u over partial y, that's n function. We know it. But this side, y prime, y prime, yeah, with respect to y, y prime plus this partial y that partial y, okay? It can be calculated. Whatever it is, it can be calculated. Because m function is known, m function is known, so that function can be calculated, okay? Yeah. All right. Can we solve this equation for k? Yeah, see? Other than k prime term, all the remaining terms are known. Why we cannot solve it? Other than the k prime term, all the all the other terms are known, so we can solve it for k function. Okay, yeah. The second one, second one, second part, partial u over partial x on two equation two, we get l prime of x equals the remaining two terms are known, known. So we can solve it for Lx function. After you know k function, L function, can you write the u function out explicitly? Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let me stay here. Yeah. So right? So we you know we get the whole idea. That's the whole idea. Okay? Yeah. Is it too complicated? Yeah. So you need to follow these steps. You need to follow the logic first. Why we need to do this step? Why we do that step? Yeah. Exactness. The first half, we work on the exactness. Checking, you know, yeah. make sure. Yeah. Second half, we find the u function. Okay, by integrals. The integrals, this time, you have x, y variables considered. Sometimes you treat y terms as constant. Sometimes you treat x terms as constant. Depends on which variable you are using. Okay. All right, let's work on a few examples. So make sure you absorb the details of this method. All right, example for exact ODEs. Solve this differential form of the ODE. 
differential form of the ODE. Yeah. So we have m function, we have n function, yeah. All right. First, check the exactness. Is it exact differential equation? Yeah, we want to check it. Yeah. This step easy. Yeah. So let me just uh, put the criteria there. Yeah. Check these. Calculate these two partial derivatives, yeah, and compare if they are the same or not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then partial m over partial y. Negative sine of x plus y. I hope you are familiar with all these derivatives formula, basic. Okay? Especially sometimes you use negative sign, sometimes non, no negative sign. Here, from cosine to sine, negative sign. Yeah. And partial n over partial x, same function, negative sign of x plus y. Then, exactness is there. We have it, okay? so we can continue. Otherwise, we have to stop. Okay? Yeah. Now, we continue the second half. All right. Now, we want to write the u function. We take integral on m function with respect to the x variable. Yeah. The constant term is k function to be determined. Yeah. All right. So n function integral, that's sine. Yeah. That's easy. Sine of x plus y. Yeah. So then plus k of y. Yeah. Second one, this time n function, we take integral with respect to the y variable. So we treat x as a constant. Yeah. So you get a x, uh, y cubed plus y squared plus sine of x plus y plus the L function. Yeah? Okay. Two different forms, formulas for the same u function. Now we need to determine k of y, L of x. Yeah. All right. What to do? Yeah, so I put the steps we need to do. We need to do yeah, these two operations, these two partial derivatives. Partial y operation on the first e equation, and the partial x derivative on the second equation. Yeah, let's do the partial y on the first equation. First equation, that's this one. This one, let's take partial y. Okay, partial y, we get a cosine of x plus y and a y prime. Yeah, okay, that's the partial y. And that one should be equal to n function. Yeah, because that one, based on the, you know, term matching. Yeah because the n function matches partial u over partial y. So based on that, so we copy the n function to the right-hand side. Copy n function, OK? All right. Can we simplify a little bit, cross out, that cancel out cosine term, so we get a y, k of y, yeah, k prime, we take integral. Here we use a constant C1, yeah, because there is a constant C1. So we get a k function expression. With some constant, we keep it. Some constant, we keep it. OK, all right. For second equation, we apply partial u over partial x. Partial u over, sorry, partial u over partial x on this expression, this one, okay, the second one, all right. Cosine, we have the co cosine, yeah. 
Because partial x, y term is gone, right? Y cube, y square, for, with respect to x, it's constant, okay? All gone. So we have that equals cosine. So cosine term, cosine term cancel out. So L function just another constant C2 number. Constant C2. See? After that, we find both K function, L function with certain constant there. Okay? Yeah. Last step, we just fix that constant. Right appropriate form because C1, C2, why so many constant? Right? Yeah. We only want to use one constant. You have too many constant. So we want to clean up a little bit. Okay? Clean up. Yeah. All right. The last step, clean up step. Because you can be written in these two forms. Can you do comparison and see what's the difference of these two expressions? Same function? C1, C2, are they the same? C1, C2 is the same, right? Yeah. So then, we only use C1, okay? Yeah, we do not need to use C2, all right? Yeah. So, let's just uh, take the first one, because the second one is the same as the first one. So let's just take the first one, okay? So this is the U function and our final solution is u function equals another c function, c3, let's say, okay? Because we want to make the u function equals another constant. That's our format. u of x, y equals another constant. So here I use a, you know, c3, but you have c1, c3. Can you bring c1 to the right-hand side a little bit? Can you move? C1 to the right hand side and combine, combine C, C3 minus C1, you make it a C. Can you do that? Yeah. Then we just use one constant. One constant. So we make it as simple as possible. Okay? Whatever, yeah, you know, it's C, yeah. Yeah, that's the solution, final solution. Okay, yeah, final solution. All right, yeah. Look at this example. Use, yeah, when you study at home, so you use this example then compare with the development process of our method. So try to understand step by step the method, okay? Because here you have a concrete example. So you can understand in a concrete way. Yeah. Otherwise, very abstract. Our development is very abstract, right? Yeah. All right. Next, in order to solve application problems, I want to give you a background for ele electric circuit background. Because our next application question is a electric circuit quest question. Yeah. All right. Understand electric circuit here. Let me put a simple picture here. Yeah. So you can see a few basic components in this electric circuit. Yeah. So the electric circuit, a path for transmitting electric current. Yeah. So now we need to get ourselves familiar with all the terminologies in electric circuit. Yeah. Because later we will have many application questions related to the electric circuit. Okay. There are three types of components in a typical electric circuit. Okay. The first type, we call an electromotive force, EMF. Yeah. 
EMF, motive force, force, okay? powered, provide energy, power to this electric circuit. Okay, so a device that gives energy to the charged particles constituting the current, such as a battery or generator. This one, the battery is the EMF. Could also be, you know, another case generator. Okay, yeah. So that's the first type of component. Device that use current. Second type, device that use current. Yeah. Yeah. Such as lamps, electric motors, or computers. Yeah. So all those devices. Okay. The third type, the connecting wires. Connecting wires, all right, yeah. Then, electric current. So that, understand the electric current yeah. in this circuit, yeah. A flow of charged particles, charged particles, yeah, moving, you know, yeah. Such as electrons or ions, electrons, okay, with negative charge, right, ions positive, yeah, just the opposite of electron, yeah. Think about, you have an item, initially the item, neutral, right, no electricity. After you take away an electron, electron has one unit of negative charge, right? Yeah, one unit. Yeah. The remaining part has one positive charge, one unit of positive charge, right? Yeah, that one is the ion. Okay, you take away one electron from an atom or molecule atom. Yeah, so the remaining that particle it's also a particle with positive charge. That's the ion. Okay, so moving from different directions, electrons moving from one direction, ions the opposite directions. Uh, so that's the way you understand a typical electric circuit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's the current. Yeah. Volt. Yeah. The unit. Volt. Yeah. The unit of electric potential. So this volt unit is used in these three places, typically, three different places. The first one, electric potential. So we use volt to measure electric potential, okay? Yeah, potential. Second, electric potential difference. Yeah, we call it voltage yeah, difference. Yeah. Two points, between two points, there is a difference, okay? Electric potential of point A and point B, they are different. So we take that difference, voltage. Okay, that's we define the voltage, yeah. and also electric electromotive force, the battery. Okay, 12 V, 12 volt, the battery. Yeah. We also use volt to measure. Basic concepts in electric circuit. Yeah. So in order to do the modeling, yeah. so we need to understand the basic concepts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Our next question, we will work on this a typical, yeah. typical electric circuit in this one. This E function, that EMF, okay, that EMF part. Electromotive force, yeah. you know, power this electric circuit. Yeah. Then, R type components, R resistor R type, yeah. C capacitor type, C type capacitors, yeah. L type, L type inductors, L type, yeah. So let's understand these three different types. Of components. Yeah. All right. 
first inducted. Yeah. It's, it's typical, some pictures, you know. So the wires, you know. Uh, yeah. So you, all right, yeah. Inductor, a passive two terminal electrical component that stores energy in a magnetic field where electric current flows through the wire, okay? Through the wire, yeah, through the wire. Then magnetic field generated, okay? Yeah? So that's physical phenomenon, okay? Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Magnetic energy and electric energy here, okay? Some conversion between these two different types of energies. Yeah. All right. An inductor typically consists of an insulated wire wound into a coil. Yeah. Yeah. So that simple structure. Yeah. But the property, so it has special property. Okay? Yeah. The, that's the first type. The second type. Capacitors, a picture like that. Capacitors hold electric charge. Capacitor. Uh, a capacitor is an electric device that stores electrical energy in an electric field by accumulating electric charges on two closely spaced surfaces. Can you see two closely spaced surface? Yeah, because outside cylinder, inside cylinder. Can you see some space between? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So here, the notate the symbol. So use you know, you can see two surfaces. Yeah, simulating two surfaces. Yeah, there is a gap between them. Okay. Yeah. So that's the uh, capacitor. You know. Electric charges. Certain electric charges you know, can be stored in that device, capacitor device, okay? All right. It is a passive electric component with two terminals, two terminals, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, that's the second type. The third type, yeah. resistor type, R, resistor type, okay? All right. A passive electrical component with a primary function to limit the flow of electric current. Yeah. Limit the flow. Okay? Yeah. So you can imagine, yeah. You know. If you do not put certain number of resistors, the flow moving very fast, you know, shortcut, right? Yeah. Short, you know. Short. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. Basic laws in electric circuit. In order to do computation, we need to know these basic laws of electric circuit. Yeah. So here, this table yeah, give us three basic laws. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. So let me explain those three laws. Then we can do the computation. Yeah. We need to use these three laws to do the computation. OK? All right. The first one, Ohm's law. Yeah. Very famous, Ohm's law. OK? Yeah. Ohm's law states that the electric current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. Look at that. Yeah. Ohm's law. Okay. Fundamental, famous physics law in electric circuit. Okay. Yeah, let me explain a little bit. The electric current, yeah. imagine. You know, in an electric circuit, electric current through a conductor. Yeah. One conductor, okay? Yeah. That conductor, you know, 
with certain resistor. Yeah. Some resistor there, okay? Yeah. Resistance there, all right? Yeah. A conductor. Yeah. So here you can imagine this. Yeah. We use this, you know. Yeah. The current, you know, through this conductor, okay? Conductor. Yeah. yeah. All right. With resistance R, okay? A certain resistance R. Between two points, yeah, these two points, okay, these two points, yeah, is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. There is some voltage be between these two points, not V, voltage, voltage, yeah. Ohm's law, that's the Ohm's law, yeah. If we write Expression, you know, uh, equality, V equals R times I. V, the voltage number, R, resistor, resistance number, ohms. The unit is ohms, okay? Res resistance number, I, the current, current. The unit is, what's that? Current unit. M, yeah, Emperor, yeah. All right, so you, you that one, yeah, yeah. All right, let's look at the second one. Inductance, inductance law. Inductance is defined as the ratio of the induced voltage to the rate of change of the current causing it. This time, not the current. In the Ohm's law, we use current. In the second law, we use rate of change of current. What's that? Rate of change of current. Derivative of current. Okay? Yeah. Derivative of the current. Yeah. So the inductance defined as the ratio. So the ratio of what? The voltage. What's the voltage? Because when you have uh, this inductor, there are coil, right? Two points. Yeah, be, besides these, the coil. There is a voltage, right? Voltage between those two points. Yeah. So the inductance is defined as the voltage, the ratio, voltage over r rate of change of the current. That's the inductance. Okay? So V equals L times derivative of I with, you know, variable T, with respect to variable T, the second law. The third law, capacitor. Every isolated conductor exhibits <laughs> capacitance called self-capacitance. Okay, yeah. So then... It is measured by the amount of electric charge that must be added to an isolated conductor, yeah, isolated conductor, yeah, to raise its electric potential by one volt. <laughs> one volt, yeah. yeah. So when you raise one volt, yeah, how much? electric charge can be stored, the amount of charge stored, right? So the formula V equals Q, Q, amount of charge stored in this capacitor, Q, okay? The unit is coulomb, coulomb, okay, coulomb, yeah, yeah. unit over C capacitance Oh, sorry. Capacitance unit farad, F. Okay? Yeah. F. Yeah. Yeah. So we run out of time. Yeah. Uh, next time, when we come back, first, I need to review these three laws. Okay? Then we start to solve our application problem regarding electric circuit.